Third one, that's great. If you know how to do that one, that's that's awesome. That's a different. Uh, that's the uh, one of those cubes that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. So, on the first example, of course, on the denominator, we can't factor that. It's going to stay the same. Hopefully, we're going to simplify that out. On the numerator, though, there are some something we can factor out. Now, the question is, do I need to factor out a negative or not? No. Do you see how the largest term is already positive? The largest term, the exponent with the largest term is already positive. That's what we want to happen. So we don't need to factor out a negative there. That's fine. So we're just going to factor out what? Three. Three. Great. Any x's? X cubed. X X four. You're going to take the biggest one that's common to both. What's that? And what we have remaining is, yeah. did you get that, that far? How many people did? Good, all right. On the denominator, we have 3x to the third. Does anything simplify? This is like one of those ones we had yesterday, only kind of in reverse, actually. It's, it's good. The 3x, 3, 4, 3. Yeah, 3s are definitely gone. The x to the cube and x to the fourth, we can also simplify that. Okay, those are factors in this case. So x to the third is gone. The x to the fourth becomes? There's x to the first power. Just don't forget about that. Remember to write that x. So here we're going to have x, 3x minus 1. You can put it over 1 if you'd like to, but since this is some expression over 1, you really don't need that 1. So if you get this far, you're done. How many people did get that far in that problem? That's good. If you didn't, check this problem out later. Make sure you can do this. Make sure you can get down that far. Are you guys okay on this one? Do you have any questions on this one? So if we put it over 1, you would still accept it as correct? If you put it over 1, I would like for you to see that the 1 is really irrelevant here. So it's not necessary. Yeah. Okay. Under 1, that's a different story. Right. Okay, that's important. Right. But over 1, it's like, it's like doing this. My answer is 4 over 1. What's your actual answer? Four. You'd say 4. Now, if your answer was 1 over 4, can I just say my answer is 4? No. no, that's a different story. So if it's over 1 like that, you really don't need the 1. Okay, if it's under 1, yeah, you certainly need the 1. Okay, that's the difference. So our answer here is just like that. I'm not sure if you're okay with that. Yeah? Right. Now the next one's a little bit more work. Next one says, let's look at the numerator. Notice how our x squared term, the term with the largest power, has a minus in front of it, or what we consider to be the negative root with that term. What we're going to do here, what that tells me to do, you're going to factor out a negative. Did you try to factor out a negative from that? Yes. Negative what? So if we factor out negative 3, you'll get, from here you'll get negative 1, from here you'll get plus x squared. Do you see why the signs change? Do you see why the signs change, folks? Factor in that negative. Yeah. Why didn't the top one do that? Well, because we didn't factor out a negative. We factored out the positive 3 instead of the negative 3. Do you see what I'm talking about? Here we're factoring out negative 3. We're dividing by a negative there. That's going to change these two inside signs. Here, we're not doing that. We're factoring out positive 3. Because the, the term with the largest exponent is already positive. That's what we want to see. Go ahead. Okay. So, if your term with the largest exponent is negative, like right here it is. x squared, it's negative. Factor the negative. It's going to change the signs. Here, it's not. x to the fifth is positive. You leave it alone. You factor out just a regular whole number, no, not an integer. Okay? Not a negative. Number. Okay. Let's leave the denominator alone for a second. Let's work just on the numerator for now. I want to make sure we get this all the way down. So the negative 3 is going to stay there, but I am going to switch these things around. Instead of negative 1 plus x squared, I can write this as x squared minus 1. Are you okay with that? It's, it's just the commutativity of, of these two, two terms. We can do that if we keep the signs with those terms. So the negative 1 has to be a minus 1. The plus x squared, that's a positive x squared. Are you still okay? Okay. What is this? How is it a difference of squares? X squared minus 1 squared. That's the same thing, isn't it? So if we factor that, this is certainly a difference of squares. This is going to be x minus 1, x plus 1. x minus 1, x plus 1. The way you can see it, it has two terms, there's a minus, this is something squared, and this can be written as something squared. One squared. That's trivial, but you can write it as one squared. If you can do that, you can factor it. 
the way you factor it, it was the a squared minus b squared. Look that up on uh, lecture C.4 if you want. Actually, it's under C.1 on the lessons. And I, I, we do this uh, a couple times in there. So we're not going to forget about this negative 3. We have factored this. And we're completely factored on the numerator. That's what we want to see. Now, can you raise your hand and feel okay about getting there? If not, are there questions that you have on this stuff? Do you see why we're doing this? Do you see why we're factoring out a negative? Hope so, because this, this term with the power is, is negative. We want to factor that out. Can you see why we're switching those two terms around? We want to write that in the correct order. We want to write the x squared first. That way we can factor it easier. Because when you see this, that eventually will be easy for you to factor. You go, oh yeah, it's x minus 1, x plus 1. No big deal. You won't even have to do this step. It'll be in your head. We do this, we're completely factored on the top. On the denominator, we have a basic diamond problem. We're not going to have an extra step. There's no number out front. We've got 1 and negative 2. The two numbers that I'm thinking of are 2 and 1 somehow. Did you find 2 and 1 somehow? Negative 1. Like that, probably. Or switch around, it really doesn't matter. So we'll go directly to the factors. We don't need to factor by grouping because there's no term out front. There's no coefficient out front. We continue on. We'll just keep writing that until we get down to the part where both of them are completely factored. So we just carried this one all the way through. Now, is there anything that we can simplify out of that? Yeah. And you know what? If you hadn't factored out this negative 3, you probably wouldn't see it immediately, and you'd have to factor out a negative 1 anyway. Did you guys get the picture on that? You'd have to do it anyway. So you may as well do it at the beginning, because it makes things a whole lot easier. So we're going to simplify out this negative 1. We'll rewrite exactly what we have. Left, negative 3 times x minus 1, or x plus 1. You don't have to distribute, just leave it. Leave it factored. And then x plus 2. And you're done. That's as far as you can go. We can't simplify any x's or anything like that. We're, we're done. Would you raise your hand if you're okay on these two problems? If you don't, if you're still a little lost, you're like, oh my gosh, come and see me or something. I'll walk through this with you. Um, I'm, in, you know, I'm in the math lab or the office. Uh, you can always come by and see me. I haven't had very many people do that yet, but you know, I'm, I'm there. I'm available to you if you need that resource. Okay, now, this one's kind of an interesting one because what I told you is I'm not going to go over a sum of cubes or a difference of cubes in class. I want you to look at it. I hope that you did because we're going to do this one right now, and guess what? That's not. That's two terms, right? That's not a difference of squares. It's not going to factor the same way. This is actually a sum of cubes. That's a cube. Can this be written as a cube? Yeah. yeah. Here's how you deal with a, dif a difference or a sum of cubes. If you have something written as a cubed plus b cubed. I've given this to you in class. You don't need to rewrite it. It's, it's in your notes somewhere. You write this as a plus b. Remember the same sign, different sign thing? Same sign. The next part is a squared, different sign, minus ab plus b squared. So essentially, all you have to do is figure out what a and b are, then fill in this formula. It's a formula for you. Let's see if we can practice this on this example up here. Instead of x cubed plus 27, instead of x cubed plus 27, can you tell me again how I can write that? As a as this form, something cubed plus something cubed. Three cubed. Okay, so the x cubed stays the same. Three cubed instead of twenty-seven. Do you see how this is twenty-seven? It's not nine, right? We don't just multiply those things. It's three times three times three that gives us twenty-seven. You with me so far? So you see how this fits in this formula, right? Okay. What's our a in our case? What's our b in our case? Okay. Let's fill that out. All you have to do is replace a with x and b with 3. And it'll work itself out. Watch. I'm sorry, what was a again? X. Plus, what was b? Okay. Now, the next part, we're going to fill this out. What was a again? X. So we're going to put x squared. You see what's squared, right? 
minus what was A again? X. What was B? Three. Times three. We're going to rewrite this in just a second. We don't write X three, do we? No. We have three X. That's not a problem, though. Plus uh, B squared. B squared. How much is B again? Three. So we're going to write three squared. That's how you use the sum of cubes idea. The difference of cubes is exactly the same. It's just this becomes a minus. Uh, yeah, a minus, a plus, and a plus for a difference of cubes. Some cubes, that's with this plus. If this was a minus, these two signs would switch. That's the only difference there. So hopefully you can draw some conclusions from this example for that. So x plus 3, that's done. x squared, well, that's done. We're going to rewrite this a little bit. We're going to do 3x, and at the very end, we're going to do... So we have just completely factored the numerator. Can't go any further on this thing. We're going to have, instead of x cubed plus 27, this sum of cubes work for us. We're going to have x plus 3, x squared minus 3x plus 9, all over, what's the denominator still? X plus three. We couldn't simplify that. Does anything simplify? X plus 3. X plus three. That's great. We got two complete factors that are that are there on the same on the numerator denominator. We can simplify out the x plus three. Are you with me on this one? Are you sure? Fancy math, right? But it's just a formula. I mean, it works. Well, I've given this to you before. We just haven't done it in the class. So our answer is x squared minus three x plus nine. Of course, that would be over one, but the one doesn't matter, so we're just going to leave it like this. Yeah, that one? Yeah. Simplify, you mean like factor it even, even more? Well, you can try it, right? That would be a diamond problem. But what you're thinking of is two numbers that add to negative 3 and multiply to positive 9. The only things I can think of that multiply to 9 are like 3 and 3 or 9 and 1, right? And none of those are going to add to negative 3. So you can't factor it anymore. This is one of the, the three-term polynomials that you can't factor. You know, not all of them you can so some of these things that look like this, you might not be able to factor. It all depends on whether you can find these two numbers. If you can, you can factor it. If you can't, then you can. That's a good question. Any other questions before we go on? Were you able to follow that one? That's good. That's kind of an advanced stuff. That's the difference of cubes and sum of cubes stuff. That's good for you. Very fantastic. Okay, one more thing in our section, then we'll move on to 7.2 and have some real fun. Are you ready for some real fun? <laughs> of course you are. Fun Friday, right? Fra oh, it's Fraction Friday. Oh. <laughs> see, see, I knew there was something good about today. Okay. Some of you are like, I hate you. <laughs> Not only do you make us do fractions, you make stupid jokes about them. I know. <laughs> Ruin my Fridays. That's what that's what I do. Okay. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. That's all. Last one I want to show you before we move on. Um, x squared plus six. Let's do that one over. Let's do this one together. We're going to go through it kind of quickly because there's one thing I really want you to see about it. Let's look at the numerator.